Revelation chapter 9, beginning at verse 17. The Bible says, And in my vision I saw the horses and the riders sitting on them. The riders wore armor that was fiery red and dark blue and yellow. The horses had heads like lions and fire and smoke and burning sulfur billowed from their mouth. The Bible says one third of all the people of the earth were killed by these three plagues, by the fire, the smoke, and the burning sulfur that came from the mouth of these horses. Their power was in their mouth and in their tails, for the tails had heads like snakes with the power to injure people. But the people who did not die in these plagues still refused to repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. The Bible says they continued to worship demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, and idols that cannot see nor hear nor talk. You know, tonight's going to be my 34th message this year on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And my message tonight is titled this, Bizarre Images of Revelation. You know, there's times throughout the year that uh, uh, certain messages will just grab a hold of me. And I've been dreaming about this message and, and been going through my heart all week long. Praise God. And I pray that God will speak to you here tonight. Hallelujah. Now, the book of Revelation is simply uh, an unveiling, an uncovering of the Lord Jesus Christ and all his power and all his authority. Now, we find that in the book of Revelation, God uses bizarre images. He uses symbols and numbers to tell his story. Now, in the scripture that I read tonight, we find that there's riders on horses with armor that's fiery red, dark blue, and yellow, very descriptive things that John saw in this vision. He said the horses had heads like lions and tails like snakes. He saw that from their mouth plagues came from the form of fire. Plagues came in the form of smoke and burning sulfur. The Bible says this caused one third of all the people of the earth to be killed by these three plagues. Now, in these bizarre visions of the book of Revelation, we can see how God will guide history towards his purpose. Praise God. How many knows God's got a plan? Hallelujah. And his plan is perfect. Praise God. We don't have to understand all these things. Praise God. We just have to know that we are in the palm of his hand and his word is going to be fulfilled exactly what he said. Praise God. I, I don't know about you, but I want to have clear vision. I, as John 2,000 years ago, I received a vision from God. I, God gave him a, a snapshot, a behind the scenes look at, at the judgment of God in the end times. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 18, the Bible says, When there is no vision, the people perish, but, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the heavenlies, a lot of, thing, a lot of spiritual things that are going on behind the scenes that we cannot see with our natural eye. The Bible says, For we wrestle uh, not against flesh and blood, but against spirit but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, come on, in high places. Now, as I think about my message tonight and these bizarre images that John saw in this vision, now John had to describe many things that no one never seen before. Now, think about it. Try describing seeing a horse that had heads like lions and a tails like snakes. Sounds very, very bizarre. Come on. Now, I believe when you have clear vision from God, come on. When God speaks to you, praise the Lord, you'll have clear vision and you will see things, spiritually speaking, that this world 
cannot see. Praise God. How many can see the, some of the things that's going on in, in our nation here to even this night? And, and you can see through all the smoke and all the distractions and you know something ain't right here. Come on. Your spirit will bear witness when it's right, and you can just feel it in your spirit. No, there's a lot of evil that's taking place in our nation. There's a lot of people that are deceived. Come on. Now, nothing can replace God-given vision. Come on. Having clear vision will take you where God wants you. Having clear vision is the difference in knowing where you're going or traveling in circles. Having clear vision will keep you motivated, engaged, and committed to the steps that God has for you. Because vision drives everything. Come on. Hallelujah. Vision br brings clarity. Vision brings focus. Vision brings Relief, praise God. And we are not in the dark to the things that's going to come upon this world because John saw these things and shared these things with us. Hallelujah. Now, some of the bizarre things that John saw. John, John saw here in the book of Revelation, he saw signs and wonders with the sun turning into darkness. John saw smoke, fire, and brimstone. He saw cosmic eruptions that will take place. He saw the moon turn into blood. He saw the sky splitting apart. John saw judgment poured out by plagues and diseases here in the book of Revelation. John saw natural disasters like we've never seen before, such as massive earthquakes, floods, famines, pandemics. Come on, folks. Hallelujah. We see a prelude to these things already. John saw wars and rumors of wars, uh, lawlessness, and great death here in the book of Revelation. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, the book of Revelation is not to be feared, folks. Come on. I truly believe that the book of Revelation is here for us to, to let us know God's got this. And he's going to play it out exactly the way he said. Hallelujah. John saw in the book of Revelation that numbers are extremely important. Come on, we've talked about numbers. John saw judgments of God all wrapped up in the number seven. With seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, seven signs, and seven bowls. The number seven is a number of, of completion and perfection with God. John saw the number 666. Come on, let me read it to you. Revelation 13 and 8, the Bible says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Come on. The Bible names the beast given under the, the symbol of the number 666. The mark of the beast is the mark of mankind. Come on. The beast is the very opposite or the counterfeit for God's divine plan. Come on. How many knows the enemy always has a counterfeit to the things of God. Come on. John saw the number 144,000 here in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14, the Bible says, Then I saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and had his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of a mighty ocean waves or the rolling of loud thunder, and it was like the sounds of many harpists playing together. This is some of the things that John saw, this great choir sung a wonderful new song in front of the throne and before the four living beings and 24 elders. Come on. No one can learn this song except the 144,000 who have been redeemed from the earth. Some of the bizarre things that John saw uh, in, the, in his vision from God. John saw many different characters come onto the scene. He saw the two witnesses. He saw the four horsemen of the apocalypse riding a white, red, black, and pale horse. 
He saw the Antichrist, the dragon or the beast, the false prophet, some of the characters that come onto the scene in the end days. Come on. You know, Christ is the fullness of God's revelation. Praise God. How many knows Christ is our hope? If you're saved and sanctified and covered in the blood of the Lamb, come on, folks, you don't have nothing to worry about. Praise God. I don't know about you. I talked about it. I'm going home on the morning train because that evening train's going to be too late. Praise God. I, I know he's coming, and he's coming very soon. He said in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be changed. I come tonight with good news. Praise God. I've read the back of the book. We win because of Jesus. Jesus, because the blood he shed on Calvary's hill 2,000 years ago. Glory be to God. You know, as believers, we can look above all the chaos in hope. Look at this world. There's a lot of chaos going on. Come on. Well, we see the things going on with China and Taiwan and, and, and North Korea and, and Afghanistan and, and, and uh, uh, everywhere you look. Come on. It seems like there's chaos going on. Russia invi invading Ukraine. And I, I heard it again this week. Uh, they're talking about the, the, uh, the attack uh, uh, on the uh, Chernobyl. Come on, we've been talking about warm wood. We find that here in the book of Revelation. It's the Ukrainian word. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God is in control even when the world is out of control. Praise the Lord. I believe there's no doubt that God's prophetic timetable is accelerating in the day that we live. Jesus even said that in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 22. And he says, and except those days should be short, there should be no flesh saved. But for the very elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. He's going to shorten the days. Come on to the time that he's going to come. Please listen to me closely, folks. The tribulation period is going to be a fierce time of judgment coming on this world. We see it in these bizarre images and symbols and numbers and things that John saw 2,000 years ago. Praise God in his vision from God. We can see that God is positioning things here in the last days. Praise God. We see that this world is on a moral downslide. Come on somebody. The spirit of deception has took hold and dug its dirty nails into our fabric of our families, into the fabric of our society. But I believe God has a plan. Come on folks. I believe God is about to raise up some folks to stand tall here in this hour. Praise God. It's time for the church to be the church of the living God. It's time for the church to pray. It's time to pull people out of the pits of hell and see revival touch our nations. See revival touch our, our, our nation. Could somebody say amen? And things are going to play out exactly the way God said. Come on. He knows all things and there's going to be nothing that's going to surprise him. Hallelujah. And you know what? None of these things should be a surprise to us. Praise God. As we've been studying the book of Revelation, Praise God. None of, these, none of these things should be a surprise to us because all these things have been prophesied. Hallelujah.